In this video, we are going to talk about single responsibility principle. Single responsibility principle says a class should have only one reason to change, meaning a class should have only one job. What it means is when you're creating a class, you have to make sure that your class should have only one job, should have one single responsibility and it should have only one reason to change. So this keyword over here and is very important when we talk about single responsibility principle. So when you are creating a class, you have to make sure that all the responsibility which you are counting in the class should not be separated by the keyword and. For example, let's say you are creating a student record class. All right. And you have multiple functionality in this class. Like this class is responsible for calculating the number of students. And also this class is responsible to add the student records in the database. And you can also edit this student's record. So if you just heard me, I used and word quite a lot. While describing the class functionality, I used and keyword quite a lot because the class was doing multiple things. It was calculating the number of students and then the class was also recording the data into the database and also the class was able to edit the data, the student's data through our single class which breaks our single responsibility principle. Single responsibility principle says that your class should have only one responsibility. And when you describe your class, you shouldn't be using and keyword. If you're using and keyword while describing your class, it means you are breaking the single responsibility principle. Now let's also talk about why do we need to use single responsibility principle. It's because if your class is responsible for multiple things, if you edit in one part of your class, it can affect the other code as well. So let's say if you edit a code which is responsible for storing data into your database, then that can affect some other functionality which is written in the same class. So if a class has multiple responsibilities, it can increase the possibilities of bugs, which we do not want. So our goal with single responsibility principle is to separate the behavior so that bugs arises as a result of your change and it won't affect the unrelated behavior. So if there is a bug in your code, even if you apply single responsibility principle, you would be very sure that the bug is caused due to your change only. It is not caused due to some effect of some unrelated change, right? So this is why single responsibility principle is very important. If you segregate your code into multiple classes, the chances of getting bugs would be reduced. And if you do get bugs, it would be very easy to figure out which class has actually caused the bug. Now let's take a real world example. And in this example, you can see there is this person and he says, I'm a developer, I'm a designer, I'm a tester, and I'm a product manager. Now you can think that if in a company, only one person is responsible for all these tasks, how would they carry all these responsibilities? responsibility. It would be a miss. The company will go in loss and the task will not be completed because he won't be able to complete either the developer task or designer task or tester task or product manager task. So this person is breaking the SRP rules. To follow the SRP rule, one person should have only one responsibility. So one person will be developer who will be taking care of the development. Other person would be the designer who will be taking care of the designing. Now the other person would be the tester who would be taking care of the testing part of your product. And then lastly, we will have our product manager who will be taking care of the whole product. Now this way, you will have a proper product which will be managed by our product manager, but it is internally being done by all these people who are responsible for their own job. So this is following the single responsibility principle, but this over here is not following the single responsibility principle. Now let's take one more real world example. Let's say you go to market and you purchase a robot. If your robot is something like, hey, I'm a robot and I can make a coffee and clean the house. Now, as you can see, I have this and keyword. It means this is breaking the SRP principle. Now, if you want a robot which does follow the SRP, RP principle, it means it can do only one job. So I'm a robo and I can make coffee. So the functionality of this robo is only to make coffee. So this robo is expert in making coffee only, whereas this robo claims that it can make coffee and clean the houses as well. So being a good solid principle followers, we will be going with this robo, which will have only one single responsibility. And he is the expert in making coffee. So we'll go ahead and purchase this robo itself. 
So in a nutshell, if a person or object or a class is responsible for only one job, then it is following the SRP principle. Whereas if it has multiple jobs or multiple responsibility, then it is not following the single responsibility principle. Now let's look into the coding example for single responsibility principle. Now let's assume that we have a class book. So this book class has these variables like the book name, author name, year of the print and then the price of the book and then ISBN number. And then we have this constructor. So this is a very simple book class that we have over here. Now let's say that you are creating a books website where you're selling books. And now you have to create a new class which will basically calculate the price of the book. So let's say we create an another class and we name it public class invoice. Now inside this class, we will have some more variables. So something like our book itself. So we will create private variables, so private book book. So this would refer to the book which user is purchasing and then the number of books the user is purchasing then if we are providing any discount and then the tax rate and then the total price of that book and then again we will have our constructor and in this simple constructor we will just initialize each of these variables now after this we will have our main functionality of this class which is to calculate the price of the book so we will create a function called calculate total and inside this function we will have a double price where we calculate our price using this and then after we have the price with our discount rate with the quantity of the book which user has purchased we will be applying our taxes and then we will return our price with tax so this is a single responsibility of this class now let's say another developer comes and they have one more functionality to do they want to print the book details as well so what they will do is they will create one more function over here so previously this class had only one responsibility which was to calculate the total but now there is two responsibility which is first to calculate the total and then second is to print the invoice and this is how the developer prints the invoice so now this class has two responsibility one is to calculate the total and another one is to print the invoice now one more functionality comes from the product team and now they want to store this record this book which was purchased from the user they want to store this record in our database so maybe let's say store it into some file so our developers will create one more function save to file and in that function they will write some code to save the invoice into our file. Now if you see what happened is as the requirement came we kept adding all the functionality into the single class and this is breaking our single responsibility principle because this class has three responsibility. It calculates the total of the book and it prints invoice and it saves to file as well. So this is breaking the single responsibility principle. Now how do we resolve it? Now to resolve this, we don't want to do all of these functionality in this class itself. So as we decided initially, this class will only be calculating the total of the book. So we will leave this functionality over here and we will remove these two functionalities from this class and we'll create another class to print the invoice and to store the invoice into the backend. So let's create two more classes. So first we will create a class called invoice printer whose single responsibility would be to print the invoice. Let's do that. So we will create a public class named invoice printer and in this class we will refer to this invoice. So we want to print this invoice so we will refer to this invoice class. So let's create a variable named private invoice invoice. We will be referring to this invoice class and then we will create our constructor and this constructor would be to simply instantiate our invoice uh, variable and then we will have our function to finally print the invoice. So this is our function to print our invoice using this invoice printer. Now this invoice printer has only one responsibility to print the invoice. Now let's create our another class to save this invoice into a file. So let's create a class named invoice persistence. In this class again we will be referring to this invoice class because we will be 
persisting this invoice class itself. So let's create an instance of invoice and then let's create our constructor to initialize this invoice and then we will be creating our function to finally save this invoice as a file. So our function will be created and now as you can see we have three different classes. One is to calculate the price of the book. Now another one is to print the invoice and then the third one is to save the invoice to a file. Now this is following single responsibility principle. Now the benefit of this is if there is any bugs found while printing the invoice, we would be very sure that this will not affect the other functionality of our product. If there is any bug, it would only be in this part only and it would not affect the other functionality of our product. So following single responsibility principle is very important if you want less bugs and robust and bug free product.